everyone. Welcome to the Maria Cosette Show. We have a great show for you today because we have art. And you'll be seeing that shortly with my guest, Yeva Babayan. Please stay tuned. And of course, for any other information or to get in touch with us, you are welcome to email info at mariacosette.com. Stay with us. My guest today is the very lovely Yeba Babayan. She is a product designer and artist. Hello. Hi. Well, first of all, I want to thank you not only for being here, but having these beautiful pieces draping my set. Thank you. It's my pleasure to be here. Yes, and we're going to talk about all of your art and everything. So first and foremost, let's talk about your background, education, initial interest in painting and all of that. Well, as far as initial interest in painting, I grew up in a family where my father was an artist and my mom was a free spirit. So I always grew up around art, creativity, and a bohemian life. So it wasn't that specifically I was interested in art, painting, but it was right. just creativity and art all around. And uh, we migrated to, migrated, to <laughs> America when I was 10 years old. And um, I continued my painting and drawing and creativity and I never veered away from that aspect and I knew it's always going to be what I'm going to do. Okay. I never thought about doing anything else. So I yeah. went to Art Center, I studied graphic design, but painting and creativity has always been a part of everything I do. Yes, it's a part of who you are, it's ingrained in you. And For isn't sure. it funny how it's hereditary? Absolutely. I've, yeah, even when I used to work in healthcare, I'd always ask the physicians and there's no real explanation because it's nothing like tangible you know but right. um anything artistic is so hereditary and it's such a beautiful thing so it was the evolution absolutely i yeah. think that came about when i was born i think there was a sign that said the evolution has arrived when right. i was born <laughs> i love it i love it and so in case you're wondering any of her work and who she is and all of that can be found at evolution.com um okay so now let's talk about as far as how your painting and talents in that have translated into product design because here on the show we always talk about people that exercise both sides of the brain and you've done both very successfully. And so um, what have you found in the process of you know, your talents in painting moving over to the business aspect as far as aesthetically pleasing art? for display versus, you know, functional product development and design? Well, essentially, I don't differentiate product design from painting. It all comes under the umbrella of creativity. Right. So putting the creativity on a canvas as opposed to a product, as opposed to a packaging that's commercially sold as a commercial, um, you know, usable item, it all comes under the same umbrella for me. Right. So on this canvas, I put it as, you know, um, imaginary desire that came out in this image. But when I design something that's commercially sold, it's the same source of creativity and the same ideology that goes into creating that. Right. And the idea, the fundamental idea behind that is to appeal to people's emotions because people buy with emotions, people Absolutely. process things with emotions. So when I design something commercial, it's the same idea, which is how do I appeal to people emotionally? If I want to give them something that makes them feel sexy, I want to make them feel fun, I want to make them whatever they want to feel, I can give it to them because I understand how to appeal to people's emotions. Absolutely. Very well said because marketing, the very uh, fundamentals of understanding how to market a product is all through emotion. Absolutely. Yes, because people will buy the product if it touches them in a certain Absolutely. way. You know? But you can't deceive them. It has to no. be honest because yes. a lot of commercial products deceive people. Right. If you buy this, you'll be better. But what I want to tell them is you're already amazing, but you know, if you get this, it'll vibe with your already yeah. Yeah, himself. just accentuate it. <laughs> exactly. Yes, exactly. So what is your creative process? And then also in that, when you talk about what you pull inspiration from, let's please talk about this amazing piece here. Um, it's beautiful. It goes Thank perfect you. with my set. But <laughs> other than that, it's just, I mean, it's stunning. And I'd like for you to talk about that. And then in general, where do you pull inspiration from? Your moments of, you know, being inspired and feeling compelled to just paint something. Okay, that's a very interesting question. This specific painting came about, it's a lifelong journey that came to be this painting. And this was inspired by 
shamanic experiences. Okay. Like in a, for this, I derive from our Armenian cultural history of paganism, where we come from. Before Christianity, we used to be pagans. We used right. to be people of the earth. We used to be healers. We used to be very emotional and attached to the earth. And this, the serpent power, which always comes to me, I don't like snakes, I don't like real snakes, but the serpent energy that is vastly available in the universe appealed to me through my cultural heritage of being Armenian. Because we are innately healers and people of the earth. We are very ancient. And this idea uh, inspired this specific painting where we are connected with the universe primordially and um, universally and through our hearts and we are connected with everything around us, specifically being Armenian. Amazing. Now, Repeat the second question. <laughs> yes, where do you generally uh, okay. pull inspiration well, from? Well, for paintings, I pull inspiration about how I feel. I kind of do a little meditation, see how I feel. And when I start painting, I don't really paint. This is interesting because a lot of creative people tell me this as well. When they actually start doing the work, it's not them doing it. When right. they kind of let go and surrender to the emotion, the work comes through them. Absolutely, yeah. It's a very I get what you're saying. meditative experience. Right. As far as commercial inspiration, I pull a lot of my inspiration from nature and from architecture. I love architecture. So awesome. there's a lot of artists and arch architects that I look at their work. I can look at a lamp and see how it can translate into a lip gloss, for example. That is so cool. Yeah. I, it's really fun, actually. So I can look at a building and see how it can translate into a packaging design and how I can like take, turn this building into something where someone can open it and the windows become, you know, right. the windows of the package. So inspiration is anywhere. Literally, I can look anywhere and in my mind I see how that can translate to what I want it to be right and make it work as such in a very fundamental practical way right it, you know what it is it's your it's your imagination your yes. incredible imagination and your perspective yes. that's really the absolutely inspiration. yeah because I may look at something and I always say that this that artists look at the world differently they yes. yeah they really notice nuances that regular people wouldn't have noticed but in like a just like you said a lamp may be a source of inspiration for yes. you to create lip gloss you but, know like, and i've actually have done that, that? yeah <laughs> who would ever think that that's so awesome and so the people that you work with are really lucky to have you to Thank have you. yeah to have such an imaginative soul and you're so passionate when you talk about it so much so that you forgot the second part of my question I did. because you're so into what you're <laughs> saying and I love that it's such an admirable quality it really thank really you. is thank you um so please stay with us we are going to pick apart Yeva's brain and talk about all the amazing things she's doing and of course once again you can check out all of her work her bio see who she's all about at yevolution.com stay with us Hey everyone, we are back with product designer and artist Yeva Babayan. So I wanted to ask you, what are the advantages and disadvantages of working solo as opposed to working for a design firm? You know why it's funny? That question is funny because every time I've interviewed with companies, they ask me that question. Really? Because I go on about a year or two year hiatus of working on my own because I don't want to deal with anyone. Right. And then sometimes I resurface and I want to work with companies. Now the advantages of working alone is that you are in your own world. You don't have to answer to anybody. You don't have to be anywhere at any time. Right. You are your own boss and it's amazing. Amazing. What happens then is the um, security or stability issue yeah. where month to month it's a hustle. You have amazing clients, but then there goes a month where you have nothing. Right. And it's much more stable when you work with a company. You get to meet people that you never would have met because you get cabin fever when you're on your own. <laughs> it's just you, your computer, yeah. and your environment. And it's great for a while, but then sometimes you're like, I want to interact with other people. Right. And then you also like um, travel. You have health insurance, of course. That's awesome. Yes, benefits are <laughs> and always a good thing in so America. Having stability and the continued income that is, you know, guaranteed there right. is the amazing part of working for a company. But I like both. I'll work for a company for a year or two, and I'll get sick of it, and I'll go on a hiatus into cabin fever for about right. a year or two. So it's good to have both. Never stick with one because Absolutely. you'll get sick of each one if you stick with it forever. So right now I'm nearing about my almost two year. Uh, yeah, like time limit where I might need to go hiatus into cabin fever again but when that time comes you know it'll come on its yeah. own yeah well it's good because you've excelled in both so you know I like both yeah. and I like to work with people a lot too so when I get sick of that I'll go solo right <laughs> right um, and so in that you're a creative director uh, currently and you have to you know work with a team mm. 
as far as, you know, how, how do you operate in an organizational setting, um, as far as communicating with different organizational levels, people that aren't necessarily artistic, but you have to convey particular messages to them. So how does that dynamic work uh, when it comes to Yeva Babayan with business acumen and in an organizational setting? Okay, so what I found to be true is that the ability to be an artist is a gift because I have access to people's emotions. Right. And whenever I meet people, even IT people that I have to deal with, even the most fundamentally dry square people that do very practical work, I know how to communicate with them. Right. I don't know how this ability comes, and I always refer back to being able to be artistic, is that no matter who I'm talking to, I can see who they are and how they need to be talked to so they can get the idea that I'm trying to communicate across very clearly and legitimately. Right, right. So if I have to tell them how to assemble this piece of box in the most practical manner, somehow I know how to do it. And I know how to speak to each individual in a way that they specifically get what I'm saying without any questions and the shortest way. Perfect. So whenever I talk to people, I always try to get to the bottom fundamental basic common denominator point without any as they say, uh, beating around the bush, right, right. <laughs> which is a waste of time. So it's very easy for me to communicate with people. It's kind of a gift that I was given since I was young that I recently learned how to harness and use practically. Whoever I can talk to, I know how to exactly talk to them because I can somehow see who they are and how they need to be communicated with to get right. the ID across specifically. It's not something I can put in like psychological terms. It's not something I can describe in any you know, mainstream way, but it's just an ability that I have and I can do it. And so far it's been working out for me. Yeah. And you know what? That is a gift. And it's really the, um, the essence of this show and why, why it's important to provide a platform for people like you who have that gift, but are also artists because mm. there are incredible artists that are introverts and they mm. never want to be bothered. In fact, some of them don't have any social skills right. at all. But you've managed to, you know, excel in the business world as a creative director. Mm -hmm. And then you're also able to unplug and be an artist and create. So, Definitely. Yeah, that's cool. I it's love fun. it. Yeah, it's fun yeah. to do both. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and so what uh, advice would you give aspiring artists who want to, you mm -hmm. know, fully commit to art but unfortunately and i could say that myself as well being a musician it's not always the most profitable thing mm. um and you have to have a little bit of business know-how um mm. in order to be able to make some profit or have you know a flow mm. of income uh so mm. what advice would you give aspiring artists that want to pursue art as their main line of career or maybe even end up you know, like you, like, how did you get to where you are? That's easy. You can't make profit as your goal. Right. You have to do the thing for the sake of doing it. Yes. And when passionate. you do that fully and completely, the money comes. Right. It's not because of the money that you're doing this, because when you do that, you fail. Yeah. If I had money in mind when I did this or any other creative adventure, it never would have happened because people always want something different. Everyone out there has seen everything that there is to see. Social media has made everything exploited it at all. Right. So when you're doing something from your heart and your soul, it's very original. And what do people want? Something different, something original. And people might say everything under the sun has been done, but it hasn't because your soul is constantly in existence of the new. So if you want to do that, if you want to succeed, don't do it for the money. Paradoxically, the money comes because you don't do it for the money. Right. And it's an odd thing, but it's true. Yeah, and absolutely, and uh, and you like hit it right on the money because oh, no exactly, pun intended. <laughs> yeah, no pun intended. But they do. Yes. People people see authenticity in your work, and they see that you're passionate about it, and that's why it stands out. Mm. Um, and the same with music. When there are absolutely. artists that are like, oh, I want to be famous. It's like it's a very long road to get to be famous. Yeah. Um, and if you're doing that, you would have quit like 30 times already because yeah. it's just failure after failure after failure. And what drives you is the passion. Absolutely. Yeah. That's the only thing you should follow. Yes. The money comes after. Yeah, exactly. It's inevitable. Right. But don't do it for the money. Absolutely. So it's like a double fold, double, what do they call it? Double, double entendre. entendre. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it. Um, okay, so speaking of passion, now let's talk about these two other amazing pieces sure. that you have here. Um, let's talk about this one. It's super cool. What is happening here? So it is a male. Yes, it is a male. So this one specifically, like all of them are in that tune, but this is basically, I want to show the emotions of a human as uh, if you were to 
go beyond the physical level of when you see a person and you see their emotions as they run through them. Right. So I wanted to present oh, how people are composed emotionally. You know, like the blues are a certain aspect, the golds are a certain aspect. So, so it's cool. a person made of emotions, right? Composed of emotions. It's I the love basic this idea. One. I mean, I love all of them, but this Thank one, the, there's something about it. It's very, I don't know, it's just something about it. I guess art speaks to people differently. So. Well, that's the thing about art that I love is you don't have to have education or you don't have to be intellectual. It's, if, it, if the art is done properly, anyone can, right. you have to touch anyone. Exactly. Without past social class, past education, past everything. Yeah, there is always an appreciative eye. For um, sure. What about that one? That one is completely raw emotion. Like this one is more composed and this one is completely raw. Where I feel like women are more raw and men are a little more structured and composed. It's okay, uh, you could say it here. We're better. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's not that I don't want to make absolutes, but in general, in my observation, like I see the woman as more like no, I get what you're bleeding with reality. Right. So she is like that same idea, but more raw and, and unrefined and just Super cool. uh, abstract in a sense, but right. still very composed. <laughs> very, very cool. <laughs> And what if people want to purchase your art? Well, they can contact me privately uh, because I, I haven't done any shows in a while, but I'm working on that. Okay. But all the pieces I have in my studio are for sale. You can contact me and come to my private studio and buy them. Awesome. <laughs> and again, go to yevolution.com. And my last question that I ask all my guests, why is it important to have a creative outlet? Because don't you want to be happy? <laughs> No matter what you do, it requires creativity. You can be an accountant, a lawyer, a doctor, whatever you want to be. It all requires creativity. There's nothing that's just rigid. I mean, I can't, I literally, in traffic today, I was thinking and saying, okay, what profession is non-creative? And I realized all professions require creative problem solving. Why is it important to be creative? Because you need to be happy. Right. When you dream, you're creative. When you're singing in the shower, you're creative. All things that let go of rigid rules are being creative. So if you want to be happy, it's mandatory to be creative. You can be creative making eggs. That's very true. <laughs> That's very true. So you don't have to be an artist. You can be anything you want. Just do it creatively. Because creative problem solving is like your number one way of uh, doing the best of whatever you're doing. Very well said. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. My pleasure. Thank show. you for having me. Yeah, it was awesome. Your passion and just everything about you, you just like exude art. And once again, thank, thank you. you so much for displaying your pieces. My, My set has never looked this good. So thank you for that. And please stay with us for more of the Maria Cosette Show. Know the greats where we spotlight a legend. A true legend and significant influence on 20th century art, Pablo Picasso was an innovative artist who experimented and innovated during his 92 plus years on earth. Not only a master painter, but also a sculptor, printmaker, ceramic artist, etching artist, and writer. There is not one corner of the world where Picasso is not recognized. He lived the majority of his life in France, although he is a Spaniard by birth. In his early years, Picasso lived through the artistic inspiration of his father. Picasso attended the School of Fine Arts in Barcelona at the age of 13. In the 1900s, he moved to Paris where he lived in poverty. Get this, often burning his paintings for warmth. Can you imagine that? The Blue Period extended from 1901 to 1904. During this time, the artist painted in shades of blue with occasional touches of accent colors. The Rose Period and African influence were respectfully prominent, but it wasn't until Cubism in 1907 where Picasso took flight and created some of his most famous pieces, defining his innovative style. Later in 1919, came neoclassism and surrealism, when the artists shifted significantly in style and form. Artists see the world differently. They notice intricacies that others do not. Picasso's art were his interpretations of what he saw, and the driving force in the development of Cubism elevated collage to the level of fine art. A quote I'd like to share, and in fact, one of my favorite quotes of all time. Every child is an artist. The problem is how to remain an artist once he grows up. The 
Art of Giving, where we spotlight a charitable organization. Artists for Trauma is dedicated to enriching the lives of civilian and military trauma survivors by pairing recovery patients with established artists from various creative disciplines. Founder Laura Sharp was involved in a tragic helicopter accident on California's Catalina Island that killed three other passengers and left Laura with critical, near-fatal injuries that would change the course of her life forever. After months of medical attention and physical rehabilitation, Laura found solace in art. From her work with esteemed artists in the areas of photography, sculptures, and music, Sharp was able to rise above the trauma and improve the quality of her recovery process. If you or someone you know has been involved in a traumatic and debilitating experience and believes in the healing power of art, visit artistsfortrauma.org. That's a wrap for the show. Thank you so much for tuning in. Much love to my guest, Yeva, for her artistic talents, sharing her experiences, and of course, draping our walls with her beautiful art. For any further information, you can visit her website, yevolution.com. And so I went ahead and tested my own artistic skills and drew something for my lovely viewers. I'm obviously not as good as her, but that's fine. We'll leave that up to the professionals. Once again, thanks for tuning in. See y'all next week. Music